Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Uh, I got an email from Robert Dransfield. He says, wow, look at this, Jared, and sends me um, a picture from uh, the church's, what I think is the church Facebook page, like uh, the cover photo. And it's an image of Christ, and it looks like these are waves. Uh, I think some people thought that they were clouds, but they're actually, they look like waves. And it's uh, Christ walking on the water. And so I went to go just double check on uh, the church's website. It has the artwork from General Conference where Christ is showing the wounds in his hands uh, to the people, uh, what look like Nephites, I suppose. Um, and then if you go to the church's Facebook page and probably their other social media, uh, the banner uh, or the you know, the whatever picture is what we're looking at here. And it is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because the whole story of Christ walking on the water, there, there's, you know, different layers to it. But one of the big layers is, you know, you're in this like terrible, seemingly terrible situation. It's scary, you know. Um, I don't know about know about you, but whenever I've been on a, on a boat and it started, it's started to get stormy, um, it's always freaked me out. Uh, I don't like it when things get all crazy. And so you can only imagine, uh, how scary of a situation that would be being in a boat and there's a storm and, uh, there's waves and stuff like that. And then on top of that, getting out of the boat and walking on the water. But, you know, one of the lessons of that story is that, um, if you focus on Christ, you'll be okay, despite what's happening in the world around you and in your personal life. And, you know, maybe they chose this to go along with per, with uh, general general conference because things are, are most likely going to get worse, uh, both with persecution and chaos in the world, wars and natural disasters and all the signs of the times. But I don't think it's anything to get freaked out about. I think too many people let it get the best of them and uh, they assume the worst. It's good to prepare for the worst, but um, not to go to extremes, you know, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And a lot of times it's somewhere in between. And like I've said before, there's like always this concept that there's like this big tribulation that's coming. I don't understand why so many people subscribe to this idea. Some of it, I think comes from the evangelical world and the way that their eschatology works and they have like their timelines and they, uh, have successfully convinced Latter-day Saints that there's a seven-year tribulation period and da-da-da-da-da. I would recommend, you guys, stick with our doctrine. Stick with our interpretation of Scripture. We have a church. We have general authorities. We have apostles, and we have a prophet. We've had many of them, and they know what the Scriptures say. So they don't talk about a seven-year tribulation, but we do know that things will just continually get worse. The world will get more wicked until Christ comes, right? So in this last general conference, there was a lot of talk about, um, there's a lot of talk about protection, N not so much in like the temporal sense, but like protection spiritually, receiving protection by going to the temple, having angels have charge over you when you leave the temple. And it would be for both temporal and spiritual, but it seemed like they were focusing mo mostly on the spiritual in this general conference. Things are going to get more turbulent. The world is going to be continue to become more and more insane and crazy and delusional and uh, divisive. But if we focus on Christ, it's going to be okay. Um, while I'm here, before I switch over to the next part of what I want to talk about, um, Again, I would encourage you, follow me on Facebook. I've started to do a thing where um, some of these photos that turned out really well, I'm putting them here in an album called Wallpapers for Your Device in case you want to like save some of these and have them on your desktop, laptop, tablet, whatever. Um, I feel like I, I have some pretty good photos. That, and I use these for my own computer. And I really like this particular, <laughs> this particular picture. I had no idea before I went to Kirtland uh, that there, there were like these benches outside with this view of the temple. But I'm going to be adding to this uh, this folder or this uh, album. So feel free if you want to um, 
download any of those pictures and use them for your for whatever uh, feel free to do that so anyway <laughs> it's really fitting that you know this comes up today i, I don't know <coughs> excuse me i don't know what day they changed the the banner picture but i think it's it's recent uh it wasn't just Bob D that sent me that email. I think I saw some other comments and stuff on both Facebook and on um, YouTube. So it must have been like pretty recent. And uh, it's kind of timely for what happened to me tonight. I'm recording this on Saturday night and uh, or sorry, Friday night. And some of you caught the live stream where my car broke down. You know, we had just had a nice, successful, very smooth trip Uh you know, 15 and a half hours away to Kirtland, Ohio, and then 15 and, a half an hour, 15 and a half hours back, we had the rental car, no worries, everything went perfectly fine, and then a couple days have gone by, I've been on this like spiritual high, and I still am right now, maybe that helped carry me through what happened tonight, where uh, we were going on a drive, we're going to Walmart um, to do some, you know, pick up some groceries, and uh, the car, it just, it, it stopped working, uh, we were driving, on a crunch, a country road, a country highway, uh, speed limit it was like sixty five. Um, not not like hardly any traffic though, thankfully. And the car just stopped working. Like I, I put it on cruise control, and then suddenly I heard something happen, and then the car started to decelerate. And so I put on the gas, and there was no acceleration. And then I tried to put on the brakes, and that didn't work either. So thank goodness I wasn't in like big cottonwood canyon or something like that back in utah and thank goodness i was out in the country and there wasn't an intersection nearby in traffic uh otherwise i'd, be, I'd probably be telling a much different story right now uh or uh, you know a week or a month from now as i recover from my injuries <clears throat> or maybe in the resurrection if i if i had died then i would tell you this in my resurrected form later on but uh anyway this this thing happened and I talked and I talked about this in the live stream. Some of you saw it. There were two parts. Uh, the first part kind of ended on a on a cliffhanger. Uh, the tow truck had not yet come, but part two showed the tow truck <laughs> and our friends in our ward that came to pick us up. But in the live stream, I, I talked about the fact that you know last year was a very very turbulent year for me. That was my year of being in the boat and storms and waves all around and strong wind. Uh, it was just like thing after thing after thing after thing that went wrong. Things breaking, the cows getting out of the freaking pasture and having to chase them down. And that happened a couple times. <coughs> and um, I got that fixed, though. Don't worry about it. It's fixed. But, uh, you know, my my this like main tree that we have in front of our house, branches falling off like all the time blocking the driveway because it's like a dying tree. I'm doing my best to keep it alive, but, um, just so many things. There are a bunch of things. Okay. And so it was a year of being tested. The, the worst of which was we had a cancer scare where we thought that Jenica had cancer and we had to like wait a while before we could finally, you know, get a ultrasound and stuff only to find out that thank goodness she was okay. But it was a year of just, tests and trials and obstacles and all that stuff. And I, I, I've done plenty of videos sharing my experiences of that. And I think what has happened was, and I hope that, you know, you can apply this to, to, to yourself. <clears throat> Maybe you'll have a year like this this year or next year. Maybe you already have. Maybe, you know, you can relate to what I'm saying. But um, I feel like I didn't handle a lot of those trials very well last year. I, I was very disappointed in my performance. Um, in the live stream, I was talking, <coughs> excuse me, I was talking about the fact that there's plenty of times like when you get really stressed out, it's a really intense situation. You start to kind of like snap at people around you because you're like in panic mode, you're in stress mode. And, um, you know, you're not, you're letting your, your animal self, your natural man get the best of you and take the reins and be wild and crazy and scared and panicked and alarm the alarm bells going off. And so I feel like what happened today, if it had happened last year, I would have fallen into that trap of just not managing the situation very well. You know, maybe snapping at Jenica or being really upset or or whatever. 
but I had, you know, that the last year, it was a real refining experience. And I feel like I passed the test this time. And I think that we need to realize that, like, if you've had something happen in the past, you didn't do so well at managing that situation, whatever it may be, something happens, things don't go your way. Um, we should look at ourselves and say, how do I, how do I manage that? Do I treat others poorly because things aren't going well for me? Do I have patience with others? Do I have patience with myself? Am I able to uh, control my emotions? Because, you know, you, you can't like fully control your emotions necessarily, but you can control your actions. And I think that happens when your spirit exercises control over the natural man. The natural man just wants to, wants to like panic. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's programmed to do that, but, um, you know, we can exercise our agency and have our spirits have dominion over our natural man and, um, and work out, you know, the solutions that we need to, and, and also rely on the Lord. The first thing that I did as soon as that happened is I prayed and, um, I think I'm pretty sure because I prayed as soon as we had stopped, we were there for just like a minute and then a car pulled up and it just happened to be two mechanics and they were able to check out the car. They weren't able to fix it, but they gave me idea, gave me an idea of what was maybe wrong, but it was like just really calming to have people there that knew what they were doing. Cause I'm not a mechanic. I'm not good with cars or anything like that, but they were. And, uh, it was just like, it was almost like having two angels stop uh, to help, you know, and they did. And they, and they helped me push the car off, off onto a, a dirt road so that we weren't like in the, the main, like the highway. And, um, it was very comforting, you know, and, but I kept my cool the entire time. And I thought back to my trials from last year. And this time, like I said, I feel like I really, I passed the test. Um, what was also interesting is not only did we have those guys stop, um, which was a blessing in in and of itself that it was like fast. Like I didn't have to wait a long time. Like they were like immediately there, helped me push the car uh, to the dirt road. They checked the car and all that stuff. But as it started to like get darker and darker, I did a live stream and I noticed that we were at the one spot on this like stretch of road, the, the one power line or the pole uh, that had a light, like all the rest of them didn't have lights. It was just this one, like as far as like the eye could see down the road of all spots. That's where we broke down where there was light. So I know that the Lord is in the details and that he cares about us and he does test us. And there's probably going to be more tests coming up, just generally speaking for members of the church and people throughout the world, because we're getting closer to the second coming. So the more important thing, I think more important than prepping and leaning uh, to our own strength and our own wisdom, like, oh, I'm going to be able to survive anything. That's good. That's great. But more important is how you manage these really tough situations. Are you able to maintain your composure? Are you able to, um, you know, lift up others during a, a tough situation and not worry so much about, about yourself? Because that, that's another thing sometimes you might forget. Other people are also in the same situation. Uh, maybe you would do better to worry about them than worry about yourself and try and be the strong one, <laughs> try and be um, the angel to those around you, lift their spirits and uh, do what you can to serve them. You know, that's how we have to, that's how we should face trials. But before all that, pray. And that was like another big theme, this conference, there was a lot of talk about praying um, and the power of prayer. Um, that's how the conference actually started out. It started out with President Holland talking, a, a good portion of his talk was about prayer and how we should pray always. And he, he said that whenever we can, we should pray vocally. Uh, like when we're having like private prayers, it should be vocal unless there is no privacy. Then, you know, you have a prayer in your heart and say it in your mind. But um, that's that's really what's going to be key going forward, whether it's disasters, whether it's civil war in the United States uh, or whether it's World War Three or whatever the case may be, uh, or whether it's just the rise of wickedness. And, the, you know, that is 
that is absolutely sure. The, the world is just going to continue to um, devolve and uh, just get worse. So think to the past. Think about times when you've failed your your test and mortality. And then when it comes up again, uh, this time, pass. Think about the past and what you could have done better. And this time, do what you didn't do the first time. I did that today and it feels great. And I know that everything's going to be fine. And someone in the, in the chat asked me if we had like the roadside assistance with our insurance. And I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Jenica basically does the finances. <laughs> you guys, I, I do the work and like the heavy lifting and whatever. I work, do the stuff with the cows and uh, getting their heads unstuck, you know, from the fence. And um, she does the finances and, and the other stuff. And uh, it turned out, yeah, we did have roadside assistance. And so the, the toe was all taken care of. So that was good. And uh, I don't know, like, I don't know uh, if we're going to be able to get the car fixed. I, I feel, I feel based on what they said, both them and then the people in our ward, because they also work on cars between like all four of them. Um, I think that it's going to be okay. And if it's not, it's fine. You know, Henley father will make something work out. We'll just buy another car. We'll buy a cheap car. It's fine. I'm not financing any other cars. I'm not going to do it anymore because it's too expensive. And uh, is it worth it? I guess it depends on, you know, your individual circumstances. But for us, I feel like we just want to buy cars with cash, just a few thousand dollars. And then once they're dead, like possibly this one, <clears throat> then we'll just buy another one and we'll just keep saving up. And maybe next time we'll get a nicer car because we'll have saved up even more. But I'm not going to do any more of this debt. You know, I, I feel like I learned that lesson when we totaled our, our uh, Honda uh, Odyssey. It was a 2016 Honda Odyssey. It was like, oh, okay, this is a good new car. And then it got totaled because we hit a, a deer uh, coming back from Oklahoma. The airbags deployed. And so it was a loss. And we didn't have gap insurance. So, that, you know, maybe that's like a good idea. Have gap insurance. <laughs> so we had to pay off, you know, the rest of what we owed. Um, <laughs> finally got done with that. But there's a lot of freedom, I think, in not having car payments. And, um, just in general, not being in debt. So do yourself a favor, get out of debt if you're in it and stay out of debt. Rely on Heavenly Father. Do the best you can, but don't lean to your own understanding. Lean on him. You know what you need to do to improve yourself and your performance with your trials in life. So next time it comes up, do it and, uh, and you'll be fine. And just have patience, you know, all storms pass. I'm not aware of any storms on earth that have been raging for, <laughs> for like a hundred years. You know, I know on Jupiter, that's not the case, but we're on earth. So storms pass. So just have patience and be of good cheer. And, uh, and, and just please guys stop, stop with the doomsday stuff. If it happens, it happens. Okay, but there's no need to scare people. There's no need to scare yourself. Just, you know, I don't hear our, I don't hear our general authorities um, scare us. They give us advice. They do give us warning, but I, they don't paint a doom and gloom picture. And they have the best picture. Just do what they say. Follow their counsel, and by and large, by large, or most of us will be okay because we're members of the church and the Lord. Uh, there's special protection for members of the church, especially covenant keeping members of the church, you know, especially if you've been to the temple. So go to the temple. If you haven't gone for the first time, go. If you've already been, go again, because every time that you go, you come out with more power and in protection. And I, I feel like that happened when I went to the Kirtland Temple. I just want to point out one more time in President Nelson's um, talk he was talking about the fact that every dedicated temple, and he put in italics on the written version, he put in italics every temple that's been dedicated. And the missionaries there at Kirtland, they said, they've said that as far as the church is concerned, the Kirtland temple doesn't need to be dedicated again. Now, I don't think the spirit was really there the entire time that uh, it was in the possession of Community of Christ and whoever had it before. <laughs> but 
now that it's back in our possession, you know, after talking to so many people that had been there before and been there after, it's pretty clear that the spirit is there again and it's dedicated. And uh, I think that a lot of those blessings hold true if you go to the Kirtland Temple. So, sorry, that's highly specific. But if you go to the Kirtland Temple, I think you, you can expect uh, spiritual blessings because that's I feel like that's what I've received since being there. So that's it. Just, you know, let's look at that picture again. Let's go back to here. Now let's go to Robert's thing. Focus on Christ, not the waves. Focus on Christ, not the waves. You can do impossible things by focusing on Christ and having faith. That, that's the other thing, having faith. Having faith in Christ, you'll be okay. All right, well, <clears throat> that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.